Hi, I'm Dot. And I'm Marinas. And we've been asked to do this for the um, this time tomorrow slot. So here we go. Um, as I've said, my name is Dot and um, I moved here from Beckenham in January 2013. And I'd lived in Beckenham for most of my adult life, so it was quite a wrench really. I trained as a nurse and uh, I worked in the NHS for 30 years, about 12 years in health visiting, 10 years in general practice, and then the last 10 years of my career were in management, in clinical governance, patient quality, risk management for a community trust. So I've spent nearly all my time working in the community. Mm -hmm. I then had a little Botox business for two years, but I had to give that up when I moved here, so then I fully retired. Yeah, I've, uh, I've had my own business, uh, or this particular business, since 2002, uh, and I serve the, the elderly um, with an essential service, uh, supplying uh, rise and recline chairs and adjustable beds, and the inquiries come from direct from the supplier. So I never know where I am from day to day, really, only the following day, which leads us on to what we'll be doing tomorrow. You know, and I know now that uh, I'll be uh, having an appointment in Bromley tomorrow afternoon, um, uh, and that's it. So I have to travel to Bromley, which is requiring one to bed and see the bed and see what he needs. So test to see what he needs, and then supply him with the right bed, or medically the right bed. Top. So really, you say your front line is obviously other people's homes when you go into people's homes when you're at work. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, my front line is much more nebulous, really, because I haven't got one. I haven't got a working environment. So my front line is probably my neighbours here in the square and the people I meet opportunistically in shops, queues or wherever I happen to be. So tomorrow um, I have no idea who I'll see because I haven't got anything planned. But I know I'll be doing quite a lot of cleaning um, after the weekend where Marina has done a lot of cooking because he loves cooking. And he creates quite a lot of chaos when he does it, but it's always delicious. Um, so that's my tomorrow. Mm. Uh, right, and as, as for the, um, the the question they asked us to say is, is how does God use us in this front line? Um, and obviously, I'm up to you, but there's just one point in this in this 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 time of COVID, is that because of the as you know that the, the care homes and places and people I deal with. I was particularly frightened, I think, coming into this this, this sector. And I, I mean frightened. I had no idea what would happen. I had no idea what the business was. And certainly, you know, that we prayed and I kept asking people who were praying, said, what does God say about this? What does what does God say that, 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 that will happen through this COVID? Is it him? And eventually, I mean, I was given a word and I was given a word, which is Jeremiah 29. And it says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. So I know with that confidence that I'm, I'm carrying on working and I know and I can share that with customers uh, and I can share my faith with customers when it arises. And it, it does arise quite a few times, it does. So yes, that the, the work can be a front line, yes. It's not the only front line, but it is a front line. Yeah. And do that. Um, well, I think... I've been aware, particularly since lockdown and being much more solitary, really, that uh, God uses me to witness to my faith, to people that I just meet wherever I am. If it happens to, to come to me, I do now firmly stand witness. He's given me more words for people and more confidence to say them. And he definitely has used me more in prayer. So I'm more prayerful. Sadly, not in a very disciplined way. I'm not very disciplined with my faith. But people's names will come, come into my mind and come into my heart. And I'm able to just stop and pray for them there and then, just as he, he drives me to do so. Um, at the beginning of COVID, I said, you know, Lord, what, what can I do in this? And I, he just said to me, this is a battlefield. Just mm. stand. So really, that's all I've been trying to do over these past few months. Just stand in this front line which is very small and very local mm. and is it anything you didn't encourage the church with it well yeah very very much um again since covid um and in recent actually recent weeks even more so the line um from Haggai Haggai of the that's written on the banner in the church the glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of this former house has really come to me strongly again and again and again 
And if that word was given to somebody in the church to have that banner made and to place that there, then I firmly believe that God is saying this will happen. I will bring this about. Mm -hmm. This will come true. So I, I really feel I'd like to encourage the church in that. And also how prayers have been answered during this time of COVID through the prayer group, through people praying, even though we've not been, been mm -hmm. able to get together. Um, we've had prayers answered for friends oh, yeah, that we've yeah. seen movement through prayer, through prayers of people in the church. Mm -hmm. um, and to welcome Rachel in the church and Michelle as, as children's workers, as church is moving forward, even though it might not feel like it very much. And I think God is really has big things for CBC. Mm. And you? Yeah, very much the same, really. It's that, um, you know, during this time, our, our prayers have been very much for the church. And I think that there is one picture that's, uh, that, that, that sticks with me, which uh, it's stuck with me for a while and then suddenly there's a reason to say it now. And I, I, I do want to share it with you. It's, it's, it's the Tuesday evenings, the prayer time. Um, you know, when through Zoom we, we, we get together and can pray. And I, I can remember on one occasion I just, we were praying and just opened your eyes and looked at the screen and, and there was Andrew sitting in this room praying, I mean leading the prayer. But it was that picture of a man uh, on his own, sitting on his own in this room, praying during this crisis, praying for the world, praying for his church, praying for the people. Mm. And I, I, I just, I watched that and I was actually moved by it. Um, and I remember th thinking, and I know pride is the wrong word, but I'm proud to be part of this church, that, that, this, that, that this, this prayer led um, from the man's during this Zoom time. And I, I think it was, it was quite powerful. Um, so that was a picture that stuck with me. And I'm proud to share that with you. I'm proud to uh, and, and blessed that we're part of this mm. church, very much mm. so. So, yes, uh, that, that's my feeling. Mm. Yeah. So yes. that's it. So there we were. So we hope you'll have um, a blessed Sunday and take care. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.